the thermal properties also you can also think of like specifying temperature of the system we can uh, specify the pressure and as I told we can specify volume then we can uh, describe chemical composition in terms of CACB CC which is basically concentration which is like moles per unit volume or in terms of Na and BNC which is nothing but mole number please note that here this is something to say a food for thought basically you can uh, try to understand this these are all extensive properties On the other hand, the properties that we are describing here, like temperature T, then uh, pressure P, these are all intensive. Similarly, chemical composition in terms of, so if I tell in terms of C, where C denotes, it's like you know, C A is it like moles of A per unit volume, right? So in that case, your C A, so C A C B C C gets an intensive property. On the other hand, if I would have told N A means N N one moles of A, that's like a mole number. Then it's an extensive. It is additive. It depends on the ex external system. But here it is an intensive, right? So this is something that you should be very careful about. So we can describe a system in terms of intensive and extensive properties, but you will see that. Describing in terms of extensive properties has its own advantage somewhere, and you will see that there is a relation between them and um, uh, this conjugate relations and all these things will be discussed. Now we know that what are the different thermodynamic processes, right? We have already described some of these processes like heat import, so transfer of heat from or to the to the system or from the system, right? We are extracting heat from the system, or transfer of mechanical work again to the system or from the system again. Another another uh, work is like transfer of chemical work to or from the system, right? So these are possible. Now think of this. Uh, now what type of systems are possible? Now I am basically classifying the systems, right? This is something very important because if I can classify, I can also modify the first law or the the differential from the first law to take care of which which will basically. Uh, according to the nature of the system, right? So, for example, if I take uh, a glass container uh, which contains some water at room temperature and pressure, and it is covered with a green lid, right? It is covered with a green lid, right? There is a green lid and it's a glass container. It contains some water. It also contains some air, right? Now, if you look at that, this system under consideration is basically liquid water. Plus air within the container which is kept at room temperature and pressure. Now the surroundings is the region in the vicinity of the system that is affected by this glass of water, right? Affected by the glass of water. For example, because of this glass of water, maybe the surrounding is slightly that means going towards the temperature um, which is like the, the same temperature as water and all, and so it is definitely going to be affected. Means then this is the region in the vicinity of this glass of water. That's the surrounding. Now you have this air column which contains water vapor, right? This air column will contain some water vapor that is in equilibrium with water in the container, right? That's what is good. This system is called closed system because it can only exchange energy, right? There can be flow of heat, right? Say for example, in surroundings uh, is uh, hot, hotter than 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 this glass of water which is kept at room temperature, then it will flow from the surroundings into this glass of water. Right, that is permit uh, permitted. Right, or if uh, if outside is at uh, the um, uh, so that is a, this is one possibility. Another possibility is that uh, uh, heat is basically extracted out from the system by the surroundings. Right, it is extracted out by the uh, surroundings. Right, all these are possible. Or heat is input from the surroundings to the system. So it's like heat flux happening 
from water means there is a heat transfer happening from what from this water container to outside which is permitted right or from outside into water that's also permitted so energy can always be transferred however you cannot because it's closed right it is closed with a lid the lid water cannot evaporate right water has this air column the air column cannot escape so all of these cannot happen so there is no transfer of matter through the walls of this container but because there is a it's covered with a lid and all but it can exchange energy to the surroundings so this is called a closed system now say for example as i told you the properties of the system in the container was like 25 degrees celsius or 290 kelvin pressure was an atmosphere and say the volume was 1 liter right so the the the, the so uh, see in 1 liter you had let's say like 0.8 liters of water and 0.2 liters of air now only thing that will influence the so temperature was 2 to 5 degrees celsius and say outside the temperature was 30 degrees celsius then uh, the, the this water this water we can get warm and then can adjust and somehow it can find a balance where the water inside the container and the surrounding can be at the same temperature right so that's possible now if i remove the lid of this container i remove the lid of this container and i allow then what happens i start i allow exchange of matter and energy with the surroundings now i have t at t was 25 degrees celsius p was 1 atmosphere p was 1 liter and chemical components is like 0.8 liters of water and 0.2 liters of air now what i did i took this container okay which is open because the lid is removed and i put it in a hot plate Right, we just kept that say some uh, 60 degrees Celsius. What will happen? What happens to the open system? The temperature inside the container will start increasing until it reaches 60 degrees, and water will start evaporating. Right, it's not going to boil, but it is going to evaporate. There will be some evaporation. Right, so temperature surroundings uh, so will also increase to means will equilibrate at 60 degrees Celsius. The water can Water will have a, like a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. There will be some evaporation, and after some time, after a long time, say from few days uh, or maybe one or two days, I see that the chemical composition now what is there right inside the container is like 0.5 liters of water and 0.5 liters of air. That means 0.3 um, liters of water have evaporated. Right? That is possible. Right? So this is something. that we will see in case of open system so open system allows the transfer of matter and energy there is yet another system which is called an isolated system so think of an a thermo flask thermos flask you have seen lot of us use thermos right in hot weather we use thermos to keep our water cold and in cold weather we often carry tea or coffee the thermos flask right even hot water right some some sometimes People carry warm water in the in 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 house plus, right? Now, say for example, in a very hot summer day in Hyderabad, I have kept this thermos flask, um, I have filled this thermos flask with uh, cold water at 15 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Now I go to my office and I see that it is still cold and it, I can enjoy this uh, cold uh, cool water, right? When I am drinking. So this, so why is it cold? Because in a hot weather in Like in Hyderabad, the temperature can goes up uh, goes up to like forty degrees Celsius, right? So why is it that this water inside this thermos uh, sealed thermos flask uh, remains at fifteen? This is because you have a vacuum, right? There is a vacuum so in thermos. There is a good technology. There is a very nice technology here. So you have a vacuum seal and also a silver lining so that you can prevent uh, heat loss by radiation. and this vacuum basically does not allow any heat loss by conduction so basically it's vacuum sealed with a uh, uh, silver lining and therefore it does not allow any exchange of heat um, energy uh, right it, it does not allow any heat exchange of heat energy between um, the, the the system system is the thermos right the water inside the thermos and the surround right water inside the thermos cannot interact with the surround so as a result it remains At 15 degrees Celsius, it remains isolated from the uh, surroundings, 
and it's also it's closed right this thumb of this glass we keep it closed unless and, and if, uh, means if we drink water we will remove the lid and we will drink but other than that I, by the way and this exact time when you are drinking basically is the time when there will be some exchange of energy and exchange of matter right but other than that as long as you are keeping this water intact there and it is sealed and and uh, there is a lid that is given if the cap is closed there is no exchange of matter or energy whatsoever so as a result so basically this vacuum seal with silver lining it does not allow exchange of heat energy and again it is also closed so it does not means right there is a lid and it is closed and all so it does not allow any exchange of matter so with this round so as a result by the way uh, there were earthen pots um, previously where we used to store water and these earthen pots you know there is like they, 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 there will be pores in certain pots and we will see that this water is evaporating and you will see a very interesting thing this evaporation causes cooling right that is the principle so you will see that the water inside the uh, these earthen pots will be like quite cool and I will I, in fact this is something that I will ask later that why does that happen and what is this type of system so we, we will often have these questions like what type of system is it is it an isolated system is it a closed system is it a uh, uh, open system right so open system means it allows for transfer of energy it allows for transfer of matter right it allows for transfer of energy as well as matter when it's a closed system it only allows transfer of energy between the system and surroundings right but it does not allow um, it does not allow um, transfer of matter right and uh, finally you also have this uh, Isolated system where uh, the, the wall is such that it does not allow the wall, basically this uh, vacuum seal uh, with the silver line uh, with, uh, with uh, coated with silver. This wall basically does not allow an exchange of energy between the system and the surroundings. It does not also this seal that is there all over. It does not allow exchange of matter with the surroundings. So this is called an isolated. So these systems are called isolated systems. So this is an isolated. So as I told you, it's like open system, then you have this closed system which has this leg and then there is this isolated system, does not allow, is a matter of energy, right? And now you have these different types of valves, like for example, if I have an adiabatic valve, which is that thermos plus valve, basically it does not allow exchange of heat energy between the system and the surroundings, right? Now the opposite of adiabatic will be diathermal, diathermal allows heat transfer between the system and the surroundings. Similarly, I can have matter transfer between the system and the surroundings if the wall is permeable. However, if it is impermeable, it does not allow, like for example, I have closed with an impermeable lid, the container is impermeable, everything is impermeable, then it does not allow flow of matter between the system and the surroundings, right? That is called impermeable. Now, if it is permeable, namely that we have a, that the wall is like a permeable, it's permeable, the wall is permeable, for example, the, 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 the body of a, a, of a earthen pitcher. So, th th those are permeable, so it allows water to escape, right? So, basically, it allows matter to uh, uh, matter to um, transfer or flow from system to surroundings or surroundings to system, right? And then there is also another part that we are looking at mechanical work. Say, think of mechanical work, when we think of mechanical work, we think of a piston, we think of a container, and we think of like moving the piston down or taking the piston up, right, we, we think of uh, such a setting, right, in such cases, say for example, the wall is rigid, if a system is there whose wall is rigid, then you cannot, the rigid wall will not allow flow of mechanical work on the, between the system and the surroundings. The same idea happens if I have, say we are talking about system and surroundings, but I can think of like two subsystems or a composite system which contains of many, many subsystems which are separated by uh, these uh, different types of walls, right? And we can look at these walls, we can relax some conditions, we can make these walls adiabatic or diathermal, we can think of these walls to be permeable, we can make them more impermeable, we can also make these walls rigid. Rigid means it does not allow any readjustment of volume, it does not allow any flow of mechanical work between the surroundings. On the other hand, if it is flexible, then it is movable, which is basically opposite of rigid, then you, your piston can 
go down or go up and as a result basically you can you can uh, perform mechanical work on the system okay when the system walls are uh, say when the walls between the system surroundings are let's say right so we will now discuss a little bit about the mechanical work right in mechanical work basically as we know uh, work is nothing but force times displacement and force is a vector and displacement is also a vector and if I take a dot product of it what I get is work right delta w right if I if I do as displacement uh, uh, infinitesimal or differential displacement dx and I have a force then f times dx is delta w right it's again a differential but it's an inexact differential right and the sign convention what we told is work done by the surroundings on the system is positive right now if you think of this let's think of this piston so you have this external pressure remember the pressure that you are exerting okay is in a process the process that you are applying is like you are exerting pressure in such a way that it's 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 almost like a quasi static increment of pressure so every time you apply pressure you allow the piston to equilibrate so that the internal pressure and the external pressure uh, equilibrates and again you increase the external pressure by an infinitesimal amount that's what you are doing now if you see if i am considering this external pressure then what is happening you initial if you initially um, uh, now i had an external pressure and say for example my volume is changing in such a way that delta v is negative that means my initial volume my initial volume was vi and my final volume is like vf then basically vf is less than vi that means vf minus vi or delta v is less than zero now in that case what done on the system so let's say you are applying pressure right as a result your volume is decreasing or reducing now volume d dv is negative now if dv is negative i have to put a minus in front of p so that minus p dv becomes positive right because dv itself is negative so if i put a minus sign then my sign convention works right minus p dv now some people write say du equals to delta q minus delta w in their case they are telling delta q that is heat input is positive but delta work done by the system is positive work done on the system is not right if work done by the system is positive now think of this there is this, external, this internal pressure there is this internal pressure now this internal pressure is increasing the volume because it is acting against the external pressure it is increasing the volume from say v, vf to vi so delta means basically if we are looking at the internal pressure which is doing work on the surroundings then basically we are trying to move the piston such that delta v is positive if delta v is positive but minus delta w so it is minus delta w right that's because work done by the system is positive work done on the system is negative now work done by the system has to be positive now if work done by the system has to be positive if delta v is positive then p has to be positive right so basically uh, here also if i have to write delta w in this case when where we have this different convention it will be basically given by p p v here it will be given by minus p v v right so ultimately when i write p d v then my d u is delta q minus delta w but the way we have written it is like d u equals to delta q plus delta w and delta w in our case also because the volume is decreasing which is delta v is negative so minus so we have to put minus in front of p external right so to make the work done positive so this will be delta q minus e right so this is the idea. now again dv that means volume right? dv is also an exact differential so volume is a state function right volume is a state function because dv is an exact differential so as you can see in the differential form the first 
law for a closed system can be written as d u equals to delta q plus delta w plus delta w prime, right? And as you can see, delta w is f dx, which is basically f by a into a dx. A dx is nothing but the dv, right? A dx is change in volume, and there is a minus p dv because delta w has to be positive according to our sign convention. On turn on the system is positive. Now remember, when this type of uh, experiment is going on that we are doing in mechanical work, this external pressure is adjusted in such a way that the process remains constant and it remains the same as the internal pressure. Means every time I'm incrementing the external pressure, uh, there is an increase in the uh, there is an increment in the, uh, the external pressure by a small amount. We allow the system uh, to equilibrate in such a way locally that it ha it has to remain the same as the internal pressure, right? In such a case, the work that we are doing it's a very infinitesimal process. I am pressing the piston and then I am holding it. So basically, I'll give an example here. So my drawing is not that great, but I can still tell you the idea. So you have this, you have this chamber, it's fitted with a piston, so I just make this chamber. Right, and then I is fitted with a piston, right, is fitted with a piston, we have this chamber, and what we are doing is I put a small container. And I have also put another small container here. In this container, I have kept a lot of pebbles. Right? I have kept a lot of stones, so some pebbles, okay, small, small stones. And here I have kept nothing. Now, what I am doing is I am taking one pebble and putting it here. As soon as I put one pebble here, there is a small external pressure that happens. Right? There is a like 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 I like am adding some some there is a p plus p now for one people now once it happens it happens so slowly the internal pressure exactly becomes like p plus p right it's almost like equilibrium at each step again I put the second thing. and so on and so forth now this is one experiment that I am thinking of. Another is, another is, instead of doing that, I take all of these papers, I take all of these papers, right, I have like all of these papers, I put all of them together, I put all of them together, then what will happen, suddenly the pressure will go up, it will not allow to equilibrate, right, but suddenly the pressure will increase, right, uh, say P e plus. Some increase like right? delta p. Now you are not giving time. You have put all the levels together, so you are not giving time for the inter internal pressure to adjust, right? Internal pressure to equilibrate with the external pressure. So basically, there will be some sort of a uh, shaking motion, right? So it will be like a to and fro motion of this piston. So it will be like it will shake, it will, and then it will, it will also shake about its mean positions. It will go on doing that. It will like evaporate about its mean, and then finally it will settle to that increased pressure. By the time it will settle, maybe the internal pressure also will be equal. But in the process, in the intermediate times, you will basically see that this, 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 this entire piston is like, 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 you know, um, going up and down. It's like vibrating about its mean, and it's, uh, it's like wobbling. And uh, at that point, so there is some some sort of a disturbance that you can easily feel, and that's a non-equilibrium process. On the other hand, or irreversible process, right? 
you put all the pebbles together you have suddenly increased the pressure and as a result the piston is going down but when it is coming down it is coming with a, some jerks right it is coming with some jerks it is basically uh, trying to vibrate about its mean and then finally settle down to its final position on the other hand the other experiment where we put cable uh, with these pebbles one by one when i am putting pebbles one by one then every time there is a small increment in pressure that there is enough time or uh, enough time is given to the internal pressure to readjust so that a small increment in pressure from the external external can be exactly countered by the increase in the internal pressure right that's the that's the so so if you feel this so it's like pebbles and you have this plunger of the piston and you have on the plunger you have this empty container so pebbles put one by one so it's like quasi static and the process is reversible because again if i put it one by one then slowly the piston the piston head will increase right the volume will expand right that is like putting it one by one or removing it one by one so we have a positive reversal process because we are allowing enough time for the system to uh, uh, adjust the internal pressure so that can counter the rise in external pressure right so that's the thing so it is adjusted in such a way it is in, it, it's 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 like you are doing like p plus dp type of an experiment right so it is always remaining the same as the internal pressure right that means the work done in this case is reversible reversible processes are most these are theoretical right these are infinitesimally slow or pulse step that is bodies or walls will never accelerate right they will come so slowly that you will feel like it's always static it's almost it's almost always static that's what it is so what does thermodynamic equilibrium mean very simply this means say for example i can take the example of mechanical equilibrium. mechanical equilibrium means if i have mechanical equilibrium that means the sum of forces on that particular body right if, if a body is in mechanical equilibrium with the surroundings so basically there will be no net force on the body right all the net forces are not right so a reversal process so if there, that means the piston although it is slowly there is some slow increment at each step there is a, a thermodynamic equilibrium that is achieved and that thermodynamic equilibrium is nothing but mechanical equilibrium which tells that the net force on the piston on the piston head is zero right so as i told at each small increment increment of external pressure p external plus dp right at each small increment p external plus dp the system is allowed to come from equilibrium or mechanical equilibrium such that the internal pressure is equal to the external pressure that's the idea right now Again, delta W is a path function. We have already discussed this, and you can take different paths. Say, for example, I can go from I to, say for example, I can go from I to B to F, or I can go from I to F directly to a nice. Uh, uh, okay, so I to B is an isochoric process where the volume is constant, and then pressure changes from P1 to P2. Then there is B to F, uh, B to, um, right? P to F is like pressure is not changing. Right, so mm, in the isochoric process, pressure is changing from P1 to P2, right, it's decreasing, and then you go from B to F where the volume is expanding at constant pressure of P2, right. Now, if I look at the work done in this case, it is minus PdV and integral from V1 to V2, right, this is like, 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 like that. It is uh, at constant pressure, we are telling it is happening from V1 to V2 at constant pressure. Now, if it is constant pressure, so, you know, say for example, B2F is an isoperic process, and since uh, it is an isoperic process, that means basically the P2 is constant, and as a result, as a result, you can easily integrate because you can take out P uh, uh, from this integral, right? P because P, P, P2 is a constant, and W just becomes minus P2 uh, times the integral of PV from P1 to P2. Right, so this is like minus p two p two minus p. So it becomes very very easy, right? Because the external pressure is not there. Now, in an isochoric process, when there is no volume change, basically, which is w equals minus p dv, 
dv equal to 0. So, for isochronic process work done equal to 0. Now, if we are thinking of an isothermal process where work done uh, for example, dv equal to k and if we are looking at uh, say for example, uh, uh, one mole of ideal gas then pv equals to nrt becomes just pv equals to rt. Right, and t is a constant, which is an isothermal condition, and um, right, t is constant means it's an isothermal condition. Now, in this case, I am integra uh, integrating c from 1 to 2, and I am using w equals to or delta w, or means like you can use this way, or just w is equal to minus 1 to 2 pdv, and p is basically p, pdv is constant, that means pv is constant. So, basically, and we can tell pv equals to k. So if that is so, then P is basically uh, K by V. So, as you can see here, so minus K and uh, by V. So, dV by V is ln V. And then again, there is an integral from 1 to 2. So, it is like minus K ln by V. Right? And K is nothing but, you can write K. Right? So, you have this, this state where you have P1 here. You have P1 here. You have P1 here. I say you have right. So it, it becomes like minus P1 V1, then V2 V1. So again, if it's a polytropic process, it's like PV to the power n equals transfer. Then basically, uh, then you can find out what the work done. Again, you have to do this integral minus P. V and you can use this relation like it's like constant by V n and then you can try to do that. Now come consider a very interesting problem of free expansion of an ideal gas. So if you have an ideal, so you have an ideal gas, so this is the state one. So if you look at the state one, you have an ideal gas at temperature T1, pressure P1, volume V1, and the other side of this is composite system. So this is a composite system. See. This has one system one, another is system uh, two, right? So these are like two subsystems of a full composite system, which is separated by a wall. The wall is such that the gas initially the wall is such that the gas cannot pass through, right? The gas cannot pass through the wall, right? It is impermeable. And out and we have maintained the right side to be empty. That means basically it has it is uh, vacuum, right? Means it's like it gets vacuum inside um, and it's empty. Now, if you look at the intermediate state, if I create a small orifice or an opening, immediately the gas will start filling up the empty chamber. And finally, you will achieve this state 2, where your pressure has readjusted such that pressure is all over the same, the temperature is readjusted to T1, and everywhere you have basically the same gas, right? So basically, the gas has just without any pressure whatsoever from outside, the gas has just completely filled the entire chamber, right? In the entire chamber. So now, in the entire chamber, at every point, the temperature is still, the pressure is P2, right? But what will be, can you tell me what will be the work done? I can give you a hint, the work done in this process, because it's a free expansion, there is no pressure which is acting on the membrane or which is acting against the membrane. So, pressure basically is zero. So, it will be dv as you know. So, basically, work done will be zero. Now, if the work done is zero, what will be delta u? Please find out. Right? The same free expansion experiment was performed by Joule. Right? It's also called Joule expansion. Right? Where you have a gas and you had vacuum on the other side of the chamber and finally, uh, the volume of each chamber is like V0 and there is no restriction to the expansion and what happens is as soon as you release this valve you have PF on both sides and then you have the final volume right so the final volume can be like you know uh, will be like so you had VI equal to V0 and vacuum but now it will be like the VF will be like 2V0 right so it will be like the total volume will be 2V0
Now there are different types of verbs, like for example, we are talking about expansion or contraction, right? Expansion uh, is basically like minus p, it's not v or uh, pdv, right? Which is like the thermal pressure working on the uh, surroundings. And then you can have surface expansion, right? Which where gamma is the surface uh, area, and um, uh, sorry, uh, this this big guy, this gamma is the surface area, and uh, um, this one, the small gamma, is the surface tension. So it is like gamma d. So this is also, I think, capital gamma. You can check that. So basically, if you have a force, let's call F a generalized force. It can be a chemical driving force. It can be a surface tension force, or it can be an expansion, or whatever, like mechanical expansion or mechanical contraction. So in all these cases, you can have a generalized force, and then you have a generalized displacement. So, it is basically the way we are writing it, whatever way, like it is PDV or whatever gamma D, uh, gamma. But mainly, one thing we have to understand is that F is a generalized force, Z is a generalized displacement. So, it works for any type of, this, this will work for any type of work. So, if I know what is this generalized displacement, if I know what is this generalized force, I can include many different types of work, including electrical work. Some, 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 some magnetic work and all this stuff, right? So, okay, then. So, uh, today's lecture is uh, so. I hope that you have enjoyed the lecture. And if you have any, any, any questions or doubts, please feel free to post and send us, uh, send my TA and my sub emails.